Amen. We exercise our spirit. Amen. God, we renew our mind. Amen. Give us the proper thoughts. Amen. Amen. Understand the words of the truth. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord for this uh, new beginning. Yes. Amen. Amen. In five weeks, we Amen. will gain to the intrinsic, right, and organic Amen. building up Amen. of the church as the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. We need to pay attention to these two words, intrinsic and organic. organic. Yes. If we pay attention to these intrinsic and organic matters, we will Amen. be able to enter into the reality Amen. and build up the church right, as the body of Christ. Amen. It would be good for us to uh, uh, just read these five uh, titles. Mm. These uh, five <laughs> titles are wonderful. right? I highlighted some of the portion on the intrinsic. So the intrinsic matters will lead to the organic result. Uh, right. So we can maybe read through them and try to memorize them. At least, uh, well, memorize not meaning word by word. You just have to pick up these five things. Make sure that we pay attention to these five things and yes. these five results. Right. Yes. Amen. Okay, one. The intrinsic essence of the church. Organic existence. Organic existence. Amen. The intrinsic growth of the church. Organic increase. The intrinsic building up of the, 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 the church is for its organic function. The intrinsic fellowship of the church is for their organic relationship. The intrinsic character of the evil purpose. So you have the intrinsic essence of the church for this organic existence. Amen. The intrinsic growth. Well, there's all kinds of growth, but what is the the most important? Well, what's the what's inside? What's the intrinsic growth of the church right. for its organic increase? Mm. Intrinsic building up. Well, there are many people use this word term building up many different ways. But what mm. is the intrinsic? What's the Bible? The most important. Uh, what this main factor, right? The Bible is showing mm -hmm. us. The revelation is telling us what's the intrinsic building up of the church so that the church can have its organic function. Right. Mm -hmm. In message four, you have the intrinsic fellowship of the churches. See right. the first three titles, you have the church. Four, right. you have the churches for right. their organic relationship. So even the churches, mm -hmm. right? This morning, we thank the Lord that we have many different churches, right? We come together to blend, to get into the word. Well, there is the organic relationship, right? There is no organizational uh, things that we put together, but there is that organic relationship between the churches. So we have to see this intrinsic fellowship. Well, then we know that whenever the Lord is doing something, well, Satan for sure is also there. So that last message, we have to see that there's the intrinsic factor of the wings of teaching, right? We have the healthy teaching. We have the, the matter of the truth. But Satan will come in. They use all kinds of things to, to, uh, to lead us to the wrong direction, to the wrong place. Well, we mm -hmm. have to see that there is that intrinsic factor. Some people sometimes we ask, well, how come there are so many of these kind of speaking this and that? Well, we need to know the intrinsic factor of the wings of teaching for their evil purpose. So we thank the Lord for these uh, five messages. Right? We need to pay attention to these intrinsic matters, and we also need to pay attention to the organic <clears throat> result. <clears throat> Amen. So this morning we will come to uh, message uh, one on the intrinsic essence of the church for its organic existence. Um, how about let's pray read 1 John 5, 1. Well, I, I enjoyed this uh, verse very much this week. 1 John 5, 1. Uh, Amen. Uh, uh, Amen. 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 
Amen. Everyone. 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 Believe. Believe that Jesus, Jesus is, the Christ. is the Christ. Christ. As being God in the garden of God. God. And everyone, and everyone who loves, who loves him, him who has his heart in his heart, has his him also has his heart in his heart. Amen. Tell everyone who believes. Amen. Amen. Everyone who believes. Amen. 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 Everyone who believes. Amen. We believe. Amen. 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 We believe in Jesus. Believe. Is the Amen. 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 Jesus. Oh, we believe that Jesus, Jesus is the Christ. We believe that Jesus is the Christ. Amen. Jesus is the Christ. Amen. Jesus is the Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Jesus, Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Christ. Amen. 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 Lord. Oh, amen. 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 Amen
right? <clears throat> Who has been begotten loves him. So mm -hmm. this is this him is the is the believer, is the saint, right? It's another believer. So everyone who loves him, loves the Lord, who has begotten, loves him. Also, who has been begotten of him. Hey. So we have hey. this life relationship. We have all been begotten uh, of God. We are hey. brothers, right? Hey. We, are, hey. we are the saints. We are the sanctified people. Hey. And this is the church. This is the basic meaning of the church, this Greek word, uh, ecclesia, means that we are the call out people. But we're mm. not just the people who are being called out by God outwardly and being put together. Amen. We need to know this intrinsic essence, right? what makes us right. uh, believers, what mm. causes us to love one another. Right? Whenever we see the saints, we just, we, 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 you know, we have something yeah, in that's us. Feeling. That's a, there's that relationship. Right. You know, many Amen. things we do not know from other countries, from other places, different background, different kind of uh, ethnicity, but we just, we love one another. But right. because yeah. this, is, this is the intrinsic essence of the church. Right. So Amen. this morning, we need to pay attention to this matter, the intrinsic essence of the church. Amen. So I will cover uh, one and two. And I, uh, then Brother Isaac will cover three. Then I hope we will leave a lot of time where right? many uh, saints can share, especially on this Roman numeral three, right? How we mm. can stay, how we can con continuously exercise our spirit Amen. and Amen. turn our heart to the Lord Amen. in order, right? right? In order, this is the way that we can stay on the way of life right. in the reality. In the, in, in the reality of the intrinsic essence of the church. Well, we can talk about the vision. We can know about the intrinsic essence. But the most important thing is that we need to stay. We need to stay on the way of life, right? In order uh, that we, we can enter into the reality of the intrinsic essence of the church. For its organic existence. Remember, if you go back to the title, this intrinsic essence is for the organic existence. Then this is something of life. Right? That's why this word organic is used. Which means that if we do not stay in this reality, we do not continuously exercise, the existence of the church would, would not have its reality. Right? This, this intrinsic essence caused the church to have the reality. The church can exist right in its organic uh, function. Well, that's why this matter of the intrinsic essence is so important. Intrinsic meaning inside, right? So you have all these uh, messages on the intrinsic. Ex hourly, we see people, right? These are the framework. Uh, people are the believers, right? Are the framework of the church, but we need to see deeper. What is inside? What's the intrinsic essence of the church? Well, this word essence, if you go uh, look up uh, in the dictionary, it says the essence is the intrinsic nature or indispensable quality of something, especially something abstract that determine its character. So what is the nature? What is the character of the church? Of course, we know it's not a building, but it's not the just the people, but it's the, it's the divine life. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I hope all of us, right, we will, we will never forget this. The intrinsic essence of the church is the divine life. Amen. Because we are all believers. We are all regenerated by God. We all have the divine life. <laughs> We're called by God. And we, we have the, this divine life in us. That, that's what makes the church the church. If you take away the divine life, there is no church because there will be no believers. The intrinsic essence of the church is the divine life, which generates the church. Well, then people will ask, well, what is divine life? This, this divine life is so abstract, right? This life, how do you explain life to people? Well, life is something not so easy to explain. What about... Mm -hmm. We had to see uh, A here 
with all these verses here, we have to know that this divine life is a person. This yeah. life is God himself. Amen. This life is not something apart from God. This divine life is the process triune God. Right then here, point A says the intrinsic essence of the church is the divine life, the indestructible life. This we have, we who are, um, we have no problem, right? We, we know this. Uh, but what, what is the divine life? Well, this divine life is the process trying God has dispensed into us. So it's not just the divine life, but this has been dispensed into us and is now mm -hmm. dispensing into us. Saints, we have to see that this divine life not only is in us right now as we're speaking, as we're listening, as we're exercising our spirit, right? This divine life, this process trying God is now still dispensing into us. Amen. So what is this divine life? Amen. This divine life is actually the process and now dispensing triune God. Amen. Oh, isn't this wonderful? Yeah, this divine well. life, this divine Hello. life is actually the process and now dispensing triune God in us. Amen. Amen. This is the divine life. Yeah. A lot of times we have this concept, God gave us something. God just gave us quote unquote life. Well, mm -hmm. God gave himself to us. Amen. This divine Amen. life is the process and now dispensing trying God. Thank it's you. not just one time. He is still in us today, right? He yes. is still dispensing his life into us. No. But you have many yeah. these wonderful verses here. The Please. most important thing when we come to this outlines are we have to kind of understand why these uh how how the brothers right come able to come to this uh this point that what verses that they study and they were able to receive the revelation in john 14 6 the lord said i am the life right he is the divine life amen and amen. you have first corinthians 15 45 we all know this verse the last adam became a life-giving spirit. But we do not realize the last Adam here, who is the last Adam? Well, the last Adam is, is Christ, right? In the flesh, Amen. the incarnated God in, in the man of Jesus. That's the last Adam. This person we read about in the four gospel, this person became, he, he was transfigured. He was pneumatized. He became a life-giving spirit. So this life-giving yeah. spirit is no different than that Jesus that we, we, uh, we see and we read in the four Gospels. That Amen. person, that man today as a life-giving spirit is in our spirit. Amen. That's why this, this triune God in it is in us. God is in us. Amen. Okay, Romans 8.10. But if Christ is in you, if you're not convinced, here you have Romans 8.10. Christ, Christ is in you. Christ, the embodiment of the triune God. Right? Mm -hmm. Colossians tells us that the, the God, the complete God, is embodied in this Christ. Christ mm -hmm. is in you. Christ is in us. Right? This Christ is in us. And mm -hmm. Romans 8, 11, this, this verse I, uh, is even more wonderful. Well, all the verses are wonderful. But I've yeah. never really paid attention to this in the past. It says, if the spirit of the one who raised mm -hmm. Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. not, well, sometimes we say, okay, the spirit is in us. Okay, fine. Uh, but here is the spirit of the one, God, right? God <laughs> is the one with the fourfold power. God who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. The spirit of the one. Amen. This God, the spirit of God himself is, is dwelling in us. Amen. Amen. So there are many verses, but we have to see that the process now dispensing triune God Amen. as the divine life is in us. Right. This is the essence. This is the intrinsic essence of the church. Right. So, so whenever we come to the church, uh, Let's not pay attention to these too much to these negative, right? The old creation aspect. We have to have this uh, 
the, this uh, this kind of eyes, right? We need to see that the intrinsic essence of the church. We need to see the triune God in each one of us, right? We need to see the triune God in the saints. This divine life is the process and now dispensing triune God. Well, there are many wonderful points under uh, A. I don't, I think, well, I'll let others share. Right? This, there's a wonderful point on Eve, the, the rib, the, uh, even the, uh, before the church came into existence, right? she was a part of Christ. The church was part mm -hmm. of Christ. When you mm -hmm. see this, uh, this picture, right? this uh, picture of uh, Adam and Eve, how Eve came about. She was, mm -hmm. she was part of Adam, right? She was, she, yes. she was built uh, by a bone, right, of, of Adam. So she was part of Adam. But anyway, uh, I, I will let others to share this. And B, we have to see that Christ became the intrinsic essence of the church. Well, Christ is the intrinsic essence of the church. Point A says the triune God, this mm -hmm. process and now dispensing triune God is the intrinsic essence of the church. B is showing us that Christ became the intrinsic essence of the church through the release of his divine life. We have uh, these verses in John, John 12, 24, right? The Lord said he is a grain of wheat, falls, falling to the ground to die. And if he dies, it bears much fruit. So the result uh, of his dying, uh, there's the multiplication. So Christ, he himself is duplicated, multiplied, right? Mm -hmm. So Christ himself is the intrinsic essence of the church. Amen. And C says Christ became the intrinsic essence of the church through the impartation of the divine life. Oh. The B, the emphasis is the release of the divine life. Mm -hmm. But C, this Christ not only released the divine life, but he imparted the divine life into us, right? As mm -hmm. a as the firstborn son of God in his resurrection, mm -hmm. that he imparted the divine life. So we were regenerated with him as, his, mm -hmm. as God's many sons and as the many brothers of Christ. Brothers. Amen. So Christ is the intrinsic essence of the church. Amen. D, Amen. not only God, Christ, mm -hmm. are the intrinsic essence of the church. This true vine is also the intrinsic essence of the church mm -hmm. the lord lord said he is the true vine so the many brothers of christ are his many branches mm -hmm. it's easy for us to see that we are the brothers of christ because we receive the same life we mm -hmm. might not realize right in our in in the way of revelation or in experience that we are the many branches grafted into him we become part of this true vine, the true vine in the universe, right? To bear much fruit for his mm -hmm. enlargement in his spreading so that they might express the triune God as his organism. Mm -hmm. God is not satisfied that he just stay in each one of us, right? He wants to spread. This true vine wants to spread everywhere mm -hmm. um, and, and to bear much fruit. So when, when the branches of the true, of the vine, here is an important uh, point here, that when the branches of the vine receive a sufficient supply of the life-giving spirit, remember that Christ is in us, right? This now dispensing process trying God is in us. But we need to receive as the branches of the vine. What do we need to do? We need to receive a sufficient supply Amen. And sometimes we say, oh, okay, well, I got something. Uh, I spent two minutes this morning. Well, but the key here is a sufficient supply. Yeah. Can we receive the su a sufficient supply of the life-giving spirit mm -hmm. every day? Right? As the life juice of Christ. Yes, amen. The ba yes. They bear fruit as the overflow of the inner yes. life supply. So if we receive a sufficient supply of the life-giving spirit as the life juice of Christ, then mm -hmm. spontaneously we will overflow. Mm -hmm. We will bear mm -hmm. fruit because we mm -hmm. have, we are filled with this divine life. Amen. Right. This we have the life supply in us. Mm 
Amen. So this true vine is also the intrinsic essence of the church. Without spreading, right? Without multiplication, the, the church is, I don't want to say there's no use, but it's not, it's not so, it's not fulfilling its purpose. Mm -hmm. But it's the same with the fruit tree. If mm -hmm. the purpose for us to bearing fruit trees are to bear fruit, but if the fruit trees grow wonderfully, right? Big, give us a shade, but there's no fruit. Uh, it, it defeats its purpose. So we have to see that this true vine, right? Christ is the true vine. He's the, he's the true vine in the universe. He is the intrinsic essence of the church. The church has to overflow. Church has to bear fruit. The church has to receive a sufficient supply of the life-giving spirit so that we can overflow <laughs> of this inner life to bear fruit. Amen. Okay, E, the organ organism, the triune God. So now we see this intrinsic uh, essence that make the us, right, the church, as the organism, the triune God. So this organism of the triune God, this living thing, this organism, the triune God, is the organic body of Christ. So the organic body of Christ is not a, a term. It's not just a terminology. Okay, okay, we are the body of Christ. Well, we have to enjoy the triune God. We have to let Christ, right, to fill us. We have to allow the true vine, right, to spread and, uh, and to enjoy the life juice. Yeah. Then we are the truly the organic body of Christ in reality. Right, constituted with his many brothers as the many members of his organic body. Amen. Okay, two, we need to see and experience the organic existence of the church. Not only we need to see, we need to experience. Right, the, the one universal church for God, of God, is for his universal expression, the fullness of God. Then the church is spreading in many localities. We're being limited by time and space. Well, with Zoom, of course, we eliminate some of that. But definitely when we are gathering together in person, right, we're being limited by the localities. But this, these local churches appearing in many cities around the globe, they are just the expression of the one church. right? They're just the expression of that fullness of God. They're no different. In point A and B, we need to see that the, the local churches are just the expression of the one church. Well, how do we know that? In 1 Corinthians 2.28, we have this verse here. And Paul said, and God has placed some in the church. First apostles, we know that apostles, they travel uh, to many churches. Right? Second, prophets. Prophets can be universal and they can be local. And third, teachers, is sent for teachers. Then works of power, the gift of healing, helps, administration, various kind of tongues. So in 1 Corinthians 12, 28, Paul puts apostles who are universal, prophets and teachers who are both universal and local, and deacons and elders who are local all together. Remember, if you go back to 1 Corinthians 12, 28, and Dang. God has placed some in the church, well, Paul was talking to the believers in Corinth, but he put all these into the same category. What does it mean? The word church in this verse implies the universal church and all the local churches. So mm -hmm. when we, whenever we see this term church, we, just, we, we shouldn't try to uh, differentiate too much right here. This, these local churches are just the expression of the one church. In the eyes of God, the universal church and all the local churches are just the church. The process and now dispensing triune God is one. We all have this process and now dispensing triune God in us. Right? The triune God is one. And he is the very essence of the church. Therefore, this church in both its universal and local aspects is one church. This is what the Lord wants, right? The Lord wants again the one church. Well, the, 
the, all the churches are the unique one organism of the process and dispensing trying God. How can we experience this oneness? Well, there are seven aspects, sevenfold oneness, right, for us to experience. We need to be one in teaching. We need to be one in practice. We need to be one in thinking. We need to be one in speaking. Then we see the golden lampstand in Revelation 1. They're one, they're golden. So they're one in essence. Well, they're all with the shape of the lampstand. So in appearance, they're all one. And they're mm -hmm. shiny, right? Mm -hmm. So these golden lampstand have the one expression. Mm -hmm. so these are the sevenfold oneness in us mm -hmm. that we can experience the intrinsic essence of the tree. Mm -hmm. Well, there are many, many points here uh, that we need to really go back and pray over them so that these can become our daily living, right? They can become our vision, that it will control mm -hmm. how we live the church life and how we serve the church. Amen. And let's go on to this uh, practical way, right? How we can stay in this, uh, in this way of life. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. So yeah. Roman numeral one was on the intrinsic essence. Roman numeral two was on the um, organic existence. Just one second. I need to, I'm trying to share. Um, can you see my screen with the outline? Yes. Yes. Okay. Amen. All right. Thank you. Praise the Lord. And then Roman numeral three is on the matter of the exercise. Praise the Lord. You know, why do we need this matter, right? And this is actually very practical. This is the exercise by every member of the body. So we can be uh, one organic entity, right? The body of Christ. Um, and this exercise is the exercise of our spirit, right? Um, the word exercise is gymnasium, right? We're, we're gymnasium, our spirit. And the, uh, the verse in the Bible, 1 Timothy 4, 7, exercise yourself unto godliness, Amen. right? Amen. The profane, old womanish myths, but exercise yourself unto godliness. Um, what do we fill our mind with, right? What do we fill our mouth with? What do we fill our spirit with, right? All these are matter of exercise. There's another verse in the Bible about exercise. The Apostle Paul says, because of this, I also exercise myself to always have a conscience without offense toward God and man, right? And conscience is part of the spirit. So that's why we need to really exercise to have this kind of conscience, this kind of spirit, right? All this is for the church. Hallelujah. So exercise our spirit. Our spirit is the organ to receive God, right? And then another part is our heart. We need to turn our heart to the Lord. Our heart is meant to love the Lord and to enjoy the Lord. And Amen. then so we need to turn our heart to the Lord always. You know, if we don't exercise, then by default, we will go on the way of the tree of knowledge, right? That is our default. We are fallen human beings. That's why we need to exercise, right? Push ourselves. Get up in the morning and then turn to the Lord. Turn your heart to the Lord every morning and every day, right? You know, mm -hmm. be on the way of life. And this Amen. way of life, life, right, is the intrinsic essence. So this way of life, it's a life in the reality of the intrinsic essence of the church for its organic existence. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, thank you. Thank you, Lord, really, that, you know, we have this vision that um, we, we need to uh, exercise to live by the tree of life instead of knowledge of good and evil or right or wrong. Because, you know, when we go through our human life, most of the time, we just go by the tree of knowledge, right? Oh, I did something wrong. Oh, you know, oh, that person is good because he did it right. You know, that's how we always think. Is it life? Is it the Lord, right? Amen. That is what we should care about, the tree of life. Amen. Amen. And then we need to stay on the way of life by loving the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Our heart is for loving the Lord. Amen. And we were really enjoying this one song about loving the Lord. Uh, what can make you overcomers? Nothing but love, pour from above, right? 
And then we just love the Lord. We need to be crazy lovers of Jesus, right? This way we can be the members of the body that is really organically functioning. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, this love between us and the Lord depends on our thoughts, right? Okay, well, so here comes a very big point about our thoughts. What do we fill our mind with, right? Satan is always attacking us, especially in our thoughts, in our mind. Yeah, Even while we are maybe, uh, you know, reading the, uh, the Holy Word for Morning Revival. Maybe Satan would put some thoughts, right? Maybe some message comes. Oh, I have to worry about this thing today. And then it really distracts us. Even that little mess on your smartphone. Oh, maybe we want to turn it off, right? And then just concentrate on the Lord. Lord Jesus, right now, I just need you, Lord. But, you know, really, Satan is always trying to attack us in our mind. And then, so if our mind and our thoughts are in the wrong place, then we'll have these four symptoms, right? Uh, first symptom is that our thoughts will be hardened, right? Oh, Lord Jesus, uh, many times we really need to pray, Lord, do soften my heart and soften yeah. my thoughts. Uh, don't let my thoughts be hardened toward you, right? We need to pray this for ourselves and then pray for people around us, right? Um, and Pray, pray, for, pray this for um, all the unbelievers that we contact, right? Um, wow, this is like so important. This matter, this is really a battle, right? Satan is attacking our mind and then the, uh, the minds of the unbelievers whom we contact, right? We always try to preach the gospel and then Satan comes to snatch away. <laughs> you know, just uh, one. I was fellowshipping with a brother and then we were like preaching the gospel together. And then, um, and then this brother says, oh, you know, we were sowing the seed. I was sowing the seed in the backyard. And then this is like, oh, this is like the, uh, the direct messaging that we're sending as the seed of life in the hearts yes. of people. And I say, oh, yeah, you know, I did that too. I sowed, my, I sowed the, uh, the physical seeds in my lawn, in my backyard. And then the following day, a bird came to eat the seed. <laughs> I was so heartbroken, right? Like, wow, you know, and I also thought, well, the Bible is right. You know, the, the birds try to come and eat the seeds. Mm-hmm. Well, pray, Lord Jesus, chase the birds away, right? Yes. Oh, don't let these uh, thoughts be hardened. We need to be, uh, be really vigilant, right? Mm-hmm. Second symptom is that the thoughts, uh, men's thought is being blinded, right? Mm-hmm. Blinded by Satan. That's the second symptom. Third is rebellion. Now, here comes a very good, very good verse about uh, the rebellion, right? Um, which one was it? The, I think it's this one. Yeah, right. Here. So, for the weapons of our warfare are not fleshly, but powerful before God for the overthrowing of strongholds. Amen. As we overthrow reasonings, and every high thing rising up against the knowledge of God. Amen. Oh, this is happening in so many people, right? Um, we we're trying to preach the gospel, and here comes the reasonings, high thing rising up against the knowledge of God. Even ourselves, right? We have these things too. And so, so there's this battle. We need to uh, pray to overthrow the strongholds. And, um, you know, we, do, we can apply this to ourselves and also to Really, the uh, the new ones were the uh, the unbelievers um, in the matter of the gospel preaching. Um, there's so much struggle when we speak to uh, people in our area, in many other areas. It's very difficult, right? Um, we preach the gospel and then they don't always receive. Well, what's going on? What's going on is there's a stronghold. And then so we need to pray with one another. Oh, Lord, we overthrow the stronghold, right? Mm-hmm. And then take every thought captive unto the obedience of Christ, mm-hmm. Lord Jesus. Mm-hmm. Amen. So that is the <clears throat> rebellious thought. The final symptom is that man's thought is corrupted, right? That means it is impure. Um, we, need to have, we need to have pure heart, for the Lord, and then um, it's in this verse here that the um, <clears throat> by this betrothing ministry, right? We have been betrothed to one to Christ as a pure version, but then the serpent comes 
And then the serpent was, you know, just as serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, that the thoughts, right, our thoughts would be corrupted from the simplicity and purity toward Christ, Amen. right? So Amen. if we are not careful, then our simplicity and purity will be corrupted, right? That's the, uh, the fourth symptom of the thoughts. Well, for this, what do we need? We need to love the Lord with all our Amen. heart so that we will be a pure version to Christ yeah. as the entire body, right? We are the bride, we are the young, uh, um, we are the pure virgin, betrothed to Christ. So we need to love the Lord. Now, all these things require what? Our spending time with the Lord. Every single day, we just need to turn to the Lord. And Lord, pray this prayer. Lord, search my thoughts. Rescue my thoughts so that they can focus. Solely and entirely. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's right. Yes, I do want to show this verse, right? Psalm 139. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts. And see if there is any, there is some harmful way for me. What is this harmful way? That's a way of death. That's a way of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, right? Lord Jesus. And take this away and then lead us on the eternal way. This eternal way, the way of life. Hallelujah. Amen. Right? Amen. It's the eternal way. Amen. You know, um, the verse, uh, the word gymnasium, I kind of looked it up. It's very interesting. because It's an ancient Greek word for the school of naked exercise because people were exercising naked, right? And then uh, it's not good to expose themselves physically. But then I was thinking, like, we are naked before God, right? And then so when we come to the Lord, we need to ask the Lord, Lord, Shine your divine X-ray upon me, and then search me. Is there anything harmful in my way, right within me? Let the Lord shine it within you. Let the Lord deal with you. Then He will lead us on the eternal way. Amen. Oh, Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So I guess uh, um, I like to leave the time for the saints to share. I think there will be plenty of uh, saints who like to share. So. Amen. 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 Wow. Thank you for this word, Lord. Amen. I really appreciate this word. I'm just going back looking at the outline concerning the in intrinsic essence of the church. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we know the divine life of God, the uncreated, eternal, indestructible life of God is the intrinsic essence, the essential aspect of the church. But uh, what I really appreciated is that the divine life is the process triune God dispensed into us continually. Mm -hmm. So we have the process and now dispensing triune God, right? Processed how? Well, through incarnation, human living, resurrection, and ascension, crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension. And on the eve of his resurrection and ascension, he visited his disciples in John 20, 22 to do what? To dispense himself as the process triune God, breathing himself into them, right? Mm -hmm. And then in Revelation 22, 1, what do we have? We have the throne of the lamb and the God. And out from that throne is flowing a river of water of life as the spirit of life to dispense God into us continually. Amen. And in John 15, Amen. verses 4 and 5, we have Christ as the vine and we are the branches. To do what? To receive this divine dispensing by abiding in the vine, right? Amen. And how do we abide? We exercise our spirit Amen. by calling on his name, praying with his Amen. word, right? Amen. Life practices are essential for us to receive the process Amen. trying God so that he can be the essence of the church. Amen. 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 I was quite touched by this matter uh, covered at the end there that um, one key practically to uh, where we are is our thoughts. Um, we, we really have to uh, let every thought be taken captive of Christ. Uh, and we, we don't realize uh, how many stray thoughts we have or other kinds of thoughts we have. Uh, we need to uh, let the Lord shine in us. We need to let the Lord touch us. Uh, 
we can be uh, uh, corrupted by Satan's own work, right? And that yes. can lead to not enormous rebellion, but maybe little rebellions of not going along with the Lord. And that can yes. lead to uh, eventually even a, a kind of a hardness uh, difficulty. Yes. And that's what we see when we preach the gospel. And if we're careful, we, we're that way. Gracious. We need this wonderful Christ. We need to turn our heart to him. We need to love him. We need to not let anything corrupt our thoughts and our attention toward him. And then we exercise our spirit. Uh, and as we exercise our spirit and turn our heart, the Lord is wonderful. We enjoy him. He is so good. Uh, he is marvelous. Oh, we, we're back in love with him all over again. And we appreciate every brother and sister. So this is, a, this is a key to our practical Christian living in the church life, to keep uh, our heart and our spirit turned toward the Lord in a continuous way. And that rescues us from all of uh, Satan's uh, attacks in various ways uh, and also helps us to understand others to uh, bring this wonderful Christ to them. Amen. 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 I enjoy the statement saying the intrinsic essence of the church is the divine life which generate the church and this life is indestructible life and the word indestructible stick out to me because uh, the life itself it's God himself and uh, the amazing thing is um, what the opposite side of life it is death, right? And this mm -hmm. life is conquering death. And in the Acts 2.24, so the scripture tells us, God raised Jesus Christ from the dead because it is impossible for death to keep hold on him. Hallelujah. Death Amen. has no power Amen. over him. Also in Revelation chapter one, Jesus himself testified, I am the living one. Hallelujah. He is the living one. I was dead, and behold, now I am alive forever and ever. He's alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and the Hades. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, the last point is uh, Hebrews 7, 16. And the scripture tells us, Jesus has become a priest by the power of an indestructible life. Thanks to the Lord, the life is important to us, dispensing to us is a divine life, is an indestructible life. Amen. 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 Yeah, I'm also uh, very impressed of, of this intrinsic essence of the divine life in us. Um, we, we often didn't realize that we have triumph God in us. Oh, such wonderful um, words. Um, but the thing is, um, this wonderful life, uh, it's not like uh, uh, naturally we, we know how to, um, how to use it. Uh, we often uh, follow the flesh. The flesh seems uh, um, always uh, stronger so we have to constantly continuously access our spirit and turn our heart to the lord in order to make this indestructible life um, grow and exist in our in our self Amen. otherwise we will lose this existence this uh, divine life um, cannot uh, um, deep root in us have a um, existence you know, in, you know, in us mm. so <clears throat> that's really good and also <clears throat> uh, I thought you know, they talk about the, the thoughts is like kind of the also, uh, part of our heart so we have to uh, be vigilant on our, on our thoughts um, by pray, read the words and mm. keep our hearts uh, in him Otherwise, you know, our thoughts will be hardened. Our heart 
will our eyes will be uh, blinded by Satan, and it's very easily you know we 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 will be take go to the wrong way, go to the side way. So we have to keep vigilant to our heart, so that we can keep this intrinsic in existence in us all the time. Amen. 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 Lord, Lord, Lord Jesus, keep our hearts soft towards you. Yes. Amen. Keep our minds set on you, Lord. Amen. It is really true, my saints, that um that our loving the Lord depends on our thoughts, you know, on, on where we set our mind on. You know, when, when I set my mind on the Lord, mm -hmm. when I think of him, um, I can't help but talk to him. And when I find myself talking to him, uh, spontaneously, I feel the love. I feel loving the Lord. Mm -hmm. So it is really key in our experience that we, that our thinking, we think of the Lord, we, we set our mind on the Lord, and then spontaneously mm -hmm. our heart turns to the Lord. Yeah. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Did the brother Andrew uh, point out for the sufficient supply? Definitely every day we go to the Lord, uh, but we stay longer to wait for his enough uh, sufficient supply. I think this is really crucial. Yeah, if we do, I think automatically we will overflow this uh, this uh, life. So this remind me that I, I should uh, begin to hear uh, his word and also waiting by a prayer um, to receive. Uh, enough sufficient supply from the Lord. It lasts me to be the, every day. <laughs> yeah, so praise the Lord that we have this uh, uh, divine life surprise us each day, but we just need to all simply open to him and continue to, uh, to receive his supply so we can live out this, his, his uh, glorious life. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Yeah, I was very touched by the uh, two verses brother uh, mentioned, the Psalm 139 to 20, uh, 23 to 24. Search me, O Lord, and uh, know my heart, try me, and make my, uh, know my anxious thoughts, and see if there is something harm way in me, and lead me on the internal way. So yeah, oftentimes I feel, yeah, it's so, so, so important that, yeah, we need God to search in our heart to reveal whether there are some harm in us. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes I feel, wow, Satan puts a little bit of flesh, puts a little bit, uh, you know, small thoughts in our heart. And it looks, it's, sometimes, yeah, it looks fine or, you know, with our own reasoning, it looks okay. We have such a thought, mm -hmm. but if we do not, you know, vigilant enough, and such, a, a, you know, this, this harmful little thought might spread, growing bigger in us, and yeah, gradually is devour, devouring us. I feel this way. It's it's so dangerous. Yeah, no. Before we realize, yeah, then Satan occupy more, more a territory in us so yeah we need to be very careful and vigilant to come to God every day ask him to yeah to seek him ask him to yeah review our heart whether mm -hmm. our thoughts a little thought is of God or mm -hmm. of us or Amen. if 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 if, mm -hmm. if yeah if it's of our, our reasoning based on knowledge or chief knowledge is not right we yeah definitely yeah eventually such a little thought become a bigger 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 you know bigger way to divine us leading us to death so mm -hmm. yeah hallelujah we need to be very, very vigilant come to guard daily yeah to, yeah to reveal search our heart amen hallelujah thank for these wonderful verses amen amen, amen. 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 it's good to recite some of the points so that you it will get into your memory 
Right. For example, <laughs> Roman numeral one, how do you remember what's in Roman numeral one? Right. The, Divine life. the main point, of course, is the intrinsic essence, right? Intrinsic essence. Essence of the church, right? Is the divine life. But Amen. what is the divine life? A, you have the process and now dispensing yeah, trying yeah, God. Yeah. B and C, you have Christ, right? So this <laughs> eternal life is Christ. Okay. Then D, he is this Christ is also the true vine. Okay. So this intrinsic essence is also the true vine. When you have the triune God, Christ, and the true vine. You have an organism of the triune mm -hmm. God, right, mm -hmm. who is the body of Christ. Amen. Then yeah. you can, you, at least you get a, a kind of a skeleton, right, what the, mm -hmm. uh, what the uh, intrinsic essence is. Then these are four points that uh, Isaac mentioned about the symptoms of the problems of our thoughts. Mm -hmm. It's also good to remind ourselves. Mm -hmm. The first one is, uh, what's the first one? Hardened thoughts. Mm -hmm. Second one is the uh, our thoughts blinded. being blinded by Satan. Blinded. Right. Third one is the uh, rebellion. rebellion. The is last it? one is the corruption. Mm -hmm. But then, whenever these kind of thoughts come to us, we can be reminded. Oh, this is one of the symptoms. Mm -hmm. We better go see doctor. <laughs> <laughs> doctor <laughs> Jesus. Amen. <laughs> okay. Amen. Yeah, if life study this uh, pathway, we need to slay the adversary in us. That's right. We better pray, read the word. Amen. So we can apply the sword of the spirit to slay this adversary in us. Amen. 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 Our symptoms and our problems. That's Amen. right. Amen. Thank you. Praise you, Lord. Thank you for your word, Lord. Amen. 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 So we may have a pure, simple. Oh, Amen. Amen. Oh, Amen. Oh, and the simple heart toward you. Amen. 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 Yes, preserve and protect our hearts. Amen. Important to uh, guard our, our uh, heart. Amen. We can always. Turn our heart to you. Amen. Amen. Our spirit. Amen. Amen. We can keep this intrinsic essence. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Then how about us end by reading the last point, the point B. Let's Amen. Read the last point together. Amen. 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 We, we continuously receive the merciful passions of our God, so that we may remain on the way of life, the way of life, in the maintenance of life, in the joint Christ, in the way of life, 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 now, but we need to continue. Yes. 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 Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Keep Amen. us open to you all throughout the day today, Lord. Amen. 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 to you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.